the En-ROADS baseline. The biggest change, of course, is it used to be 3.6 degrees C by 2100. Now, this baseline is 3.3. The reason for the change, most all of it, is due to our inclusion of the connection between climate change temperature increase impacts and then GDP growth, what we call the economic damage function. There's a whole nother article and video on that topic. But I'd like to show you more of the changes in the behavior in the energy system, in the land system, and so on here in this video. But before that, I wanna just say a few words about the baseline and how we think about the baseline. And the key thing is that we think of our baseline as a reasonable starting point for model experimentation. It is not our forecast of the most likely future. Instead, we start here and allow you to use En-ROADS to see what would it take to get emissions down first to deliver upon say the Paris agreements or down to two degrees or 1.5. I've got some notes here because Janet Tchaikovsky and our team wrote out some words I wanna capture really exactly. So think of it as an approximate aggregated, approximate aggregated implementation of current global technological policy and investment conditions. So you know there are policies around the world. Here in the US, the Inflation Reduction Act in China, the one plus N, these policies and the ones in Africa and Asia and South America and all over, they're promoting renewable energy, they're also subsidizing oil and gas, promoting electrification and energy efficiency. Now, these are the general policies around the world, but we don't explicitly capture national, state, local, international policy, like some, say, international, agent, inter, international energy agency, IEA, STEPS policy tries to add up a lot of those. We also don't, of course, include pledges or any goals and no strengthening into the future, but also no weakening or backsliding of policies is how we think about it. And just to get the words right, the baseline represents the state of the world if societal and technological changes were to continue at the current rate without additional policies or actions. So that's how to think about it. Now let's go look and see some of the big changes here in this new version of En-ROADS. Let's switch over to some slides. The big change is that oh, greenhouse gas emissions went down. Here we are in the old version. This is from 2000 to 2100. And now in the new version, as I said, mostly due to the change in uh, the economic damage function. But there's some other important contributors and other trends for you to understand within the simulator. And to show you those trends, we removed the damage function so you could really see, say, the energy sector before and after without this change to overall GDP over time. So coal, here was coal before. Now, in this new version, coal after, we have less coal. Less coal on the baseline, less oil in the baseline, partly due to the fact that we have this $5 a ton carbon price around the world. And also we have more growth of wind and solar. Well, there it is, more wind and solar renewables before and after. So significant growth in wind and solar, partly due to that carbon price, partly due to continuing subsidies in our simulator out into the future. And then third, faster than anticipated drops in the cost of wind and solar. Big changes with net land use emissions or Lulu CF. This was the old version where we just assumed that those emissions would stay flat around three gigatons CO2 uh, per year. Now, more deforestation, uh, more drops in overall sequestration into forests due to forest degradation and overall improved modeling, we have much higher net land use emissions without bioenergy. And then if we add in bioenergy here, and we think you should, this is due to burning trees, the rotting and the soil respiration, it's even higher. So 
higher land use emissions. And you'll notice when you play with the model, more potential for mitigation by cutting these emissions. Also, more electrification. This is the electric share of total capital transport before and after, before and after. There's a whole video about some of those changes. So where do we land in the world of all the other models that are out there and their assessments of current policies? Well, the state of the art of the science is this recent uh, report by the IPCC. We call it AR6. Go to the summary for policymakers and SPM.5 shows this very helpful diagram of global greenhouse gas emissions where the red line is the mean for implemented policies with the 25 to 75% range here, this fan, and then five to 95% confidence range all the way out there, all the various models assessments of current policies. It's also showing in green what it takes to get to two degrees in 1.5. So if that's what the models think when they add up all the implemented policies, where is En-ROADS? Well, En-ROADS is right here. You can see the blue dot around 2030. That is uh, uh, at the upper end of the range and the upper end around 2050. And then at the upper end of the 25 to 75 percentile uh, out in 2100, showing kind of the long-term impact of including the economic damage function. So that's where we sit, the upper end of the range, the upper range of implemented policies as convened by IPCC. The other comparison is to comp look and see where we fit and we're most comparable within the world of integrated assessment models to scenarios assessing current policies for three very important integrated assessment models as convened by the Network on Greening the Financial System, or NGFS. Those three are shown here in green. You can see GCAM from PNNL here in the United States for what they, uh, for their future for greenhouse gas emissions. In red is Remind Magpie out of Potsdam Peak in Germany, and then in brown, Message Globium out of IASA in Austria. You can see that they're clustered fairly close together. And then we add in En-ROADS. En-ROADS is a little bit above all of them, but within the range. And we can show you more about why we are above. One interesting note is that when we remove the bioenergy emissions of CO2, uh, Whereas some of the other models treat bioenergy as uh, carbon neutral, we don't. So when you remove those emissions, we get a much closer to being within the range. So most comparable to these IAMs is one way to other, the other way to think about how we fit into this overall world of other models that are out there. Okay, there's our baseline. Those are the big changes that you see in the model the energy sector, in the land use sector, and where we fit in the family of all the other projections out into the future. I hope this was helpful. Go get them.